Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie from <laughs> Pocket of Preschool. And tonight, or if you're watching the replay, today, wherever you are, um, we are talking all about using um, the question of the day in your classroom, um, how to implement the question of the day, um, tips and tricks, why, what students are learning, um, and management things too, because we all need to know how to make, manage all the things and make, um, kind of streamline all the things, right? Um, so yeah, so tonight we are talking all about the question of the day, and in the top of this post, there are links. There's links to grab it from my TBT store, there's a link to my website or my blog, and you can read more about it if you're, um, if you want to, like, look at it tomorrow or the next day. Yeah, and then there's links to past Facebook Lives and just all the things at the top of this post. So if you need anything, go to the top of this post and you will probably find um, the link you need up there. So first of all, I wanna know in the comments, I want you to tell me, do you use question of the day in your classroom? Do you use it yes or no? Or are you thinking about it? Just I just kinda wanna know kind of where everybody's at so I know um, I can kind of tailor this um, for um, you guys. So yeah, so um, basically what question of the day is, it's a um, pattern sentence question that students answer, um, and I have it as my morning routine. I use it um, during circle time. I use it as part of our morning routine. That way it gets them um, going right when they get in the door. And let me tell you what our morning routine is. So they're, my kiddo's morning routine is, and I have this in my TPT store. This is our, my visual arrival routine. Um, they put their things away, they answer the question of the day, they sign in, and then they do the table time activity. So on their cubbies, whoops, so on their cubbies they have a name tag, and these stars um, are Velcroed to their name tag. So where's my, my little example guy here? So if this was hanging on their cubby, if this was hanging on their cubby, they literally pull this off and they know what to go do next. So it's a nice little visual reminder on their cubby that that's the second thing they do during the day. And I like using it as um, part of the morning routine because it gets them learning and gets them focused, um, gets them going like right when they walk in the door. They put their things away and they immediately go do um, a fun little task. It's not taxing. Um, it's easy. It starts conversation with kiddos because there's usually a couple kiddos at the question of the day at a time. Um, so it just starts the morning off good and it gets them in the routine. That way they know when they walk in the door, um, they have a job to do. Like they have to put their stuff away, they have to answer the question, sign in, and then they get to go play. Um, or do the table time activity. So that's why I have it on here, and I just have a Velcro dot on their name tag, and then I have a Velcro dot on the top of their star, and then I also have a magnet on their star, and that way they can just stick it on um, on the question. And I'll tell you how to make um, the question board in just a minute, too. Um, but I know a lot of people are wondering, like, why do I use stars? We, um, we, I like being the superstars, it's kind of like my mascot. Um, plus it's just, I mean, isn't everybody a superstar or a superhero um, in the class? And um, you can also, if you don't want to use these, which these stars are a free editable freebie in my store, um, that way if you, even if you don't want to use my question of the day questions, you can always um, make your own and make your own in your classroom, but these are free in my store, so if you want to make your own names. Um, you can also, I know some people do this, use the ones with the pictures on them, like there's a kiddo's picture right here, so that way they just stick that up and you have a whole bunch of um, kiddo's names with their picture on it. I just use the star because it's just another way for us to start learning our name um, and learning our friend's name and every, all the things in my class are color coded, so if Charlie has a yellow star, his writing journal is yellow, his, um, his artwork clip is yellow, his name tag is yellow, his 
Um, name tag, family name tag is yellow, his job clip is yellow, so that way everything of Charlie's is yellow. So that way it's just another step towards learning his name. He all he has to do, and if you have, um, I did this when I had 18 kiddos too, I color coded so that way if um, I had like four yellow kiddos, friends that were yellow, he would just know, oh, I need to go find the yellow star with the C, and that's just the first step in him um, learning his name um, and learning their friends' names too. So that's kind of why I do color-coded stars. Um, so yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through, I'm gonna tell you how to make the board and then I'm gonna kind of tell you, um, I told you about the names, I'm gonna tell you how to make the boards, different ways you can do it, and then kind of what kiddos are learning and different questions um, you can do. All right, so everybody always asks what, what's this board? Um, this is actually a oil drip pan. I literally just have it leaning against the wall. It is not fancy. I just, it was silver. I spray painted it, or no, I painted it black with like that chalkboard paint just because it's a little bit thicker. Um, so it is a oil drip pan from an auto store and it's magnetic and I love it. That's why there's this weird little thing on it. I put the tape, um, piece of tape on it to make the T-chart. You can also put it in a pocket chart. You can also do it um, like on a board if you have an um, extra board in your classroom. I know some people do it on their smart board. So you can kind of do it um, wherever works for you in your classroom. So you wanna make a T-chart because um, a lot of my questions have a, a yes or no answer because if, if, the, if it's a open-ended question, you they wouldn't know where to put their response. So that's why I make the t-shirt because some of the questions are the we I have colors like are you wearing what are you wearing green are you wearing red um, another one I do is is the letter H in your name so we do different letters um, you can also do like clothing are you wearing um, buttons today um, so you can do all those different um, pattern sentences and I'll tell you about all the different sentences you can use in just a second um, so yeah so you can just, I use a metal board. One thing I added last year to the bottom is I got, this is from Target. It's just one of those like magnet, like plastic pockets. I added these pointers to the bottom because some of my friends weren't really pointing to each word as they read the sentence. But if they have a fun pointer, which these I just got at the Target dollar spot, if you missed it, you can just get a dowel rod and you can glue a funny eraser on the top or um, you can just get um, colored sticks. Um, you can really make pointers out of anything. Um, it doesn't have to be like um, like a fancy wooden one like this, but you can really just grab a dowel rod and just glue something to the end that they like. You can even get those, um, those squishy balls, um, those little itty bitty like ones you buy from the party store. You can put those on the end, which those are really fun. Um, but the reason why I added six to the bottom, and I just have like four, that way too, if there's more than one kiddo up here, they have a couple to choose from, they can point, are you wearing green? They like the sound that it makes <laughs> as they're pointing, and now they're tracking the sentence, they're um, reading each word as they point to it, instead of just kind of just, are you wearing green? There's... Um, you know, there's like a, a purpose behind um, their meaning, their reading, I mean, they're reading with a purpose. Let me get these back in here. So that's why I have these down there. My three-year-olds, they'll grab the pointer and they'll just be like, are you wearing green? And they'll keep pointing even after they're talking and that's totally okay. It just shows you that they don't have, they have not developed that concept of word yet and that's okay. Um, the more they practice, the more they'll get it. This, these are optional. I never make them use these, but a lot of them like to. Um, but this is one thing I added um, last year just to, so they can kind of um, just encourage them to really point to each word as they read. Because that's really important when they go to kindergarten and they're starting to read um, those early readers. They really need to point to each word as they read. Um, so that is about, so we've talked about kind of the, the names and 
Students' names are so important to them, and what better way to get them talking about letters and talking about words than to do an activity that has to do with them and their name because they, we know all know kiddos are egocentric, especially at this age, <laughs> and um, if you make it about them, they are more apt to do the activity, you have more buy-in from them, and they're going to remember to do it on their own, which will make it part of, the, um, part of your classroom routine quicker and easier. Like it's not something they come in and then it's painful to do. Um, I do have some kiddos, especially when it's the are you wearing questions. Um, like mom will text me or dad will text me what's, what's the color this week because some kiddos have to answer yes. Um, but you know, if, if that's what they need, then you know you can tell, hey, um, tell the family, hey, um, next week the, quest, or the color is gonna be blue, um, just so you have a heads up. Um, some kiddos, it doesn't bother them. Um, it just depends on the kiddo. Um, so yeah, so the are you wearing one, sometimes um, they'll be a little reluctant if they have to answer no. Um, but once they usually answer no a couple times, it's usually not um, a big deal. And if you just are joining me for the first time, I um, I taught full day with 18 kiddos a day, or 18, yeah, 18 kiddos. And I use question of the day with, with them. And then I, I teach half day now, and I only have eight kiddos in my class, but it's just me by myself. Um, so eight kiddos, and it's just me. Um, so I still use question of the day as part of our morning routine. And if you want to grab these printable questions, just hop up to the top of this post, and you can grab them from my TPT store. Oh, and if you have a photo on your phone as you're watching this of your question of the day, why don't you pop that in the comments of the live video? That way, um, that way other people can see kind of what you're doing in your classroom and maybe that will work um, for them better than this uh, magnet board that I do. Um, my kiddos in my classroom, I have a multi-age preschool classroom, so I have a mixture of three, four, and five-year-olds. Alrighty, so I told you about the color coding. So um, a lot of people ask me how, how, like how and when do I change the question? So I keep my same question all week. Um, but again, I teach three, four, and five year olds. So if you have a three year old classroom, I would keep the same question all week. If you're a kindergarten teacher, um, you can probably change out the word that changes, because um, in each pattern sentence there's one piece that changes, you could change this out every day. That way um, you're just moving through them a little bit quicker. But I I keep the same question all week, or I keep the same um, word all week, so it's the same pattern sentence. And, you know, we go through all the colors and then we move to a, um, a different set. Um, but by keeping this question the same, um, you, you'll do it with the kiddos a couple times um, with help. And now my, even my three-year-olds, even though they're not actually reading, they're not really reading the words, they're gonna read this picture cue. Um, and if you guys don't know Jen Jones, she's amazing. Um, look her up on Facebook or Instagram or on her blog. She's um, Hello Literacy. She always says that reading pictures is reading. So my little three-year-olds, they are not reading these words. Absolutely not. But what are they reading? They're reading this picture cue that, are you wearing, because they, they, they have the pattern sentence remembered, are you wearing green? So they're reading the picture cue, but reading pictures is reading. So give them things that they're able to do at their level. They're not going to read the words, so give them picture cues. Um, and all of my, the words that change out and all your questions, you want that word that changes, you want to always have a picture cue with that. So when I switch to, are you wearing like my clothing pack? And I'll show you how I organize it too. But this is all of the, um, are you wearing the clothing set? All of the words that change, are you wearing a bow? Are you wearing um, a backpack? Are you wearing numbers? It all of them have a, um, are you wearing a zipper? All of them have a picture cue with it. That way they can read that picture and they can answer um, the question of the week independently um, without your help and it's just part of their morning routine and they can just go. Um, and then like for example, later we will do, um, do you have the letter? Um, like A in your name. And once we get to then, they will know that they have to read the letter 
And even if they can't read the letter, this they can look on their um, they can look on their star and try and find it, and they can answer yes or no that way. Um, so that's when that one is. Um, and then when I do, um, there's also you can also do like beginning sounds. Like, does your name begin with the same sound as goat? And I don't have the word. I just have the picture cue goat. So it'd be like. Um, here it is on the picture of it. So if you, this is just like my little pocket chart icon. So does your name have, does your name begin with the same sound as, and then the picture cue would change out goat or apple. Um, and a lot of these questions, I make it about them, like, or their name, because when you're using their name or um, make it about them, again, you're building those relationships. They're like talking at the question of the day with each other and they're developing that oral language because again they have to be able to say it before they can write it um so yeah and then another one which actually i don't have this one printed because i never get to this one um in my multi-age classroom but i also have one this is an um one the kindergarten um teachers always tell me they love it says do you like and it has like food and animals like do you like lettuce do you like raccoons do you like football and so that one um that pattern sentence is do you like and then again you're just changing out that word but a lot of them are just and even the kindergartners especially um if you're using this one at the beginning of the year they are just reading that picture cue but that is okay because reading pictures is reading because you're still developing all of those other things and i think this is a perfect time to talk about all the things that they're learning when you're doing question of the day. So when they're doing question of the day, somebody asked, asked this and I, I jumped ahead, sorry. So we they answer it as part of their morning routine and we actually go over it as a transition um, or you can go over it during circle or sometimes we go over it and it's real quick, it's like two minutes or a minute. Um, we'll just go, how many people are wearing green? How many people said yes? How many people said no? Which one has more? Which one has less? Is it equal to? How do we know? So it, once you switch to that, then you're working on a lot of those math concepts. But we kind of just do it different times on different parts of the day. And honestly, it's when a kiddo talks about it. Like a kiddo initiates the conversation because when they initiate it, it's so much more meaningful to them than if you're like, okay, let's talk about the question of the day. What are the results of our graph or what are the results of our survey? Um, which is a great way to um, talk about question of the day with them, right? Use those big words like what is the, what are the results of our survey and talk about, you know, which one has more, which one has less. Um, you can even, and I put chalkboard paint on here. Um, I didn't do this last year. Um, but sometimes I would, um, in years past I have, I just actually honestly forgot. Um, you can put like a total or you can have a question of the day helper and they can write a total at the bottom and then you're comparing numbers as well as quantity. So they can visually see the quantity and then you could write like four and this one has five. So they would say, which one is more five, or, you know, four or five. And you can talk about numbers that way. So that's why I did it in chalkboard paint so I could write on the board with chalk. I forgot to tell you that. <laughs> and when I was, um, at the beginning, when I was telling you about um, how we introduced it. But yeah, so we just kind of go over the results um, whenever kind of they talk about it. And we actually line up. So this is like my, this is where right where we line up to go to the playground. So it's the perfect time to talk about the question because somebody always has to go to the bathroom when you line up for when you line up to go outside, somebody always has to go to the bathroom. So that's when we talk about um, our results of our graph a lot. Um, so yeah. All right. So what are they learning during when they do question of the day and then when you re review the results? What I want you to do, put in the comments what you what what are some things you think that kiddos are learning about in the comments just so we can kind of talk to each other a little bit too. Um, so the biggest thing is they are learning all of those concepts of print. They are learning that like a letter is different than a word. And they're learning that a word is a group of letters. And when those group of letters come together, they make um, a word and you can read it. Um, they're learning that left to write progression, and if you have a longer question, maybe you have a shorter spot, maybe they're learning that sweep, 
So are you wearing, and maybe if like green was, I can't get it off, <laughs> stuck. Like if green was under it, they would be learning that sweep. Um, they are learning punctuation because this is a question. It's, it's not a statement, doesn't have a period. They're learning um, punctuation. So they're learning that sweep. They're learning a concept of letter or what, what a, the difference between a letter and a word is. Um, if you're doing um, colors, they're, if you're using color words, they're learning colors. If you are doing like the clothing pack, um, whatever really set you switch it out for it, that really changes your objective too. It just adds another component to what they're learning. So if you're doing clothing, then they're learning um, some new vocabulary words about clothing. If you are, if you have a question like, do you have seven letters in your name? Do you have eight letters in your name? Um, yes or no. Now they're counting um, and they're identifying the number. If, you, if your question is, um, do you have the letter A in your name? They are now looking at letters and letters in their name and finding them. If you're doing beginning sounds, does your name begin with the same sound as um, Apple? Now they're working on beginning sounds and they're also learning when you do the beginning sound pack that that beginning letter is important and it has a job and it tells, it starts the word. Um, if you're doing a, qu a question like, do you like? They might be learning some new vocabulary. Maybe they're learning some new animals. Maybe they aren't, they don't see it every day. Um, so I think sometimes we take for granted how big some of our kiddos' vocabularies are or aren't. Um, some of our kiddos just haven't been exposed to certain things, and that's okay. That's our job to expose them to all those amazing things and amazing animals and amazing things in our world. I just have this up here as a question that I had, or that way the parents, it's kind of a cue of parent, parent drops off um, kind of what this is, or if there's a visitor in our classroom or grandma and grandpa or something, that's kind of why I have that up here. Um, somebody asked that in one of, one of the comments. So, and then they're also learning sight words like yes and no and you. And again, it just depends on what your question is and what sight words they are. Um, I have noticed if you don't do a question that is about them, like if you say what's next in the pattern and you have like two different answers, like if you say, if you have, um, if you're doing like a concept question, what I have noticed, and I noticed this a lot when I had 18 kiddos, once there's five up there, they don't look at the question, they just put it up which, whichever side has the most. They don't even, they completely ignore it and just put it up where the majority is and they go. So that's why it's really important to look at your questions and make it about them and it's something they have to think about and they have to answer. And it's not a what's next in the pattern or how many, or how many can you count? Um, so make it about something about them that they either, you know, do you like or have you been to, that would be another, ooh, that's another fun question. I might add that one to the pack. Have you been to the zoo or the museum or, you know, the library, all those fun places. And then one other fun thing to do is if you think your kiddos are just kind of doing it like automatically, Start switching up the yes and the no, especially if these are your sight words, because I know I have a kindergarten kiddo of my own, and yes and no are two of his sight words. So you can switch up where the yes and the no are. That way they actually have to read the yes and the no, and it's not just automatic. Um, so if you want to make it harder, you can do that. And all of my questions, I just have these on magnets, and I just use that magnet tape off Amazon. Um, I know somebody asked that in a question. And the reason why I have each word separate is that way, um, again, they're working on that concept of word. Like, this is one word. You can count the n number of words in your sentences. Um, and you can talk about how these are words. And this is the punctuation. So there's all kinds of um, really fun things you can do just by taking these off and have counting how many words. You can also, it depends on, depends on kind of, again, how much time you have. You wouldn't do things like this every day, but if they notice it or it comes up in conversation, definitely use those teachable moments with your kiddos. Um, like maybe they're like, oh, look, R is a short word. And then you can take them off and you can visually compare. 
And you can even take your question off, take it to your whiteboard, and you can go, let's count how many letters are in each word. How, which one is the longest? Which R? And you can even then talk about syllables. R has one syllable. Wearing, that has two syllables, so it's a longer word. So there's all kinds of great um, teachable moments you can do. And again, you wouldn't do these every day, um, but our, let me put this back in order. You, green. green. <laughs> Um, again, you wouldn't do all of these things every day, but definitely use those teachable moments when the kiddos notice these things um, in your sentence and in your words, or make it your objective. Put it in your lesson plan. Stay on the question of the day, and you can. It can be like two or three, you know, two or three minutes. Um, you know, today we're going to notice short words and long words. Today we're going to notice the punctuation. Um, you know, take a word away one morning. You know, or pretend like it fell on the ground. Oh, oh no, like, are you? And they're gonna be like, see who notices if a word is missing or not. Um, so yeah, so you can do all kinds of fun, fun things just by making them, um, making each word um, a separate piece. And again, use the, using that pattern, pattern sentence. All right, so some people were asking about what are the que different questions I do. So I always start out with, are you wearing, and then I do the color. So are you wearing green? Are you wearing blue? Um, this is my trick. So on the back of my board, I keep my question pack. And I used to, when I taught full day, I had this on my fridge because our kiddos, they could bring their lunch. So they had to put their, their lunch in the fridge. So I was like, why not do two things, two morning procedures at once? So I literally put tape on our fridge, on our white, because we had a fridge, in our, a, a, like a normal size fridge in our classroom. And I just put, you can see it on my blog if you go to the link at the top of this post. Just put a piece of tape on it and we just, I just put the pattern, <laughs> pattern sentence on the fridge and they would stick their star, read the question, stick their star up and then put their lunch in the fridge. So it was kind of doing two things at once. Um, or at least they got to do two of the morning procedures in the same place. So it kind of, you know, they could do two things at once. Um, but I take a little magnet clip, super simple, and I just keep them in a baggie. These are the um, little headers that are on the first page, and I just print them smaller. Oh, these are included in the pack, the, um, the baggie headers. And it tells you um, how to do it in the packs, too. It kind of goes step by step for you if you um, need some visual directions. And I just put all of the pieces for that question in each one so they're not all in a giant drawer mixed up and it's a mess. Um, and you can also do two baggies too. Like if you can do like an all done baggie and like need to do baggies so you can kind of keep track of what ones you haven't done and which ones you have. For colors, I just go in order of the rainbow. It's just easy for me to remember. And then I just, you know, I can, I switch it on, again, I switch it on Monday. If you want to switch it more often, you can. Um, so I do, are you wearing colors? And then I switch to, are you wearing clothing? And then what I do is I have, in an, an, an another bag, I'll have two baggies on the back of this board and the empty baggie, I'll put the ones we've done already. Um, that way I know which ones we finished. But this one is just, are you wearing, and it is like, are you wearing buttons? And again, I all have those picture cues, a jacket, boots. And I tried to put cold weather and warm weather things in here and things that are like on their clothes, like spots, that's the wearing word. Um, pants, a hat, a coat, a zipper. Um, and there's things like sandals. Um, that way, if you're in the south or you live where it's warm, you can use the warm weather ones. Um, and if you live where it's colder, you can use the colder weather ones. And it depends on what season you're doing this in. But I always do colors. And then I do, are you wearing clothing? And then after that, I do, um, do you have the letter A in your name? And then for these, I just go in order and I do A and then B and then C and then D. And when I get to the letters, I will, because now they have done the question of the week for, you know, usually about three months it takes us to get through the are you wearing? And then once we get to the letters, I do, I will change this out um, every day. The letter ones, I will change it out and we'll switch them out more frequently. Um, and then after I do, letters in my name, then you, um, I, it depends on my class. 
honestly. Sometimes I will switch to, do you have seven letters in your name? And they'll put, they, and they count how many letters are in their name and then they have to put like yes or no. So do you have five letters in your name? And you know, Brendan would put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, I, I have, I don't have five letters, I have seven. Um, and again, now you're working on name and you're working on counting. Um, and you, again, it's the perfect opportunity to talk about long names, short names, long words, long, short words. And then, um, so I kind of just depends on the class and if we're ready for the to do beginning sounds. Some years we are, some years we wait and do these last. Um, and then um, I usually almost always um, end with the counting or the beginning sounds, but then I do, does your name begin with the same sound as apple? And I used to do, um, I, and I, I, I say used to, I tried one year doing does, what letter does apple begin with? Um, and you could put like A or F. And again, once three people answered A, n the, all the other kids that came up to the question, they knew the question was done for them, so they didn't have to think, so they would just slap their star on. So that's why I make the beginning sound about their name, so they have to stop, think about it, and then answer the question. So yeah, and then um, I, I never get to it, um, but I know a lot of teachers after that do the, um, do you like lettuce, do you like potatoes? Um, they do the do you like set. And again, haven't printed it because I never get to it. Um, but again, I teach three, four, and five year olds, so if you teach kinder or you move through your questions quicker than me, you will have time and you will get to it. But even if you change your question every day, um, there are enough questions for you in my question of the day bundle for you to have um, a different question every single day. So again, I just, so I have, I, you can tell I literally, I have a little set of, these are those like sterilite drawers. Um, I have a little set of them and I have one that has all of my questions in them and I just have them all in here. I probably need to put <laughs> this one in a little bit bigger baggie, but um, so that way I can just grab it and go. And then the question I'm working on at the time is on the back of this, so it's super easy to change out. Um, so, yeah. Oh, one other thing you can do is if you're working on the beginning sounds, I actually number them in alphabetical order. And I do have long and short vowels in here. Um, and then I, yeah, I do have long and short vowels. So um, I did number them that way. Um, I can grab them easier. And when I do the sound ones, just so it's easier for me to change out, um, I will go ahead and put them on the back of this board in order. <laughs> and then I'll put them in the bag when I'm finished with them. Um, that way I can just switch it out super easy. Alrighty. So this board, somebody asked what kind of board this is. This is a metal oil pan from an auto store that I just painted with black chalkboard paint. Um, that way I can um, put the totals on here um, when we review the results of our survey. Um, but you can also use just like a regular like magnetic board. You can use a pocket chart. Um, you can really use kind of whatever you have in your classroom on hand. Um, you can use a wall. And I've seen teachers take um, a piece of poster board and like take it and get it laminated and put Velcro dots on it and they just use a piece of poster board. Um, you can do that. You can also do ribbon. Um, just get some of that big fat ribbon. They just make their question on the board or on their wall, and then they have a ribbon strip. And that way too, they're, then they're in order. And then um, when you're reviewing the results of your graph, then it's a lot easier to tell which one has more and which one has less because they're all in that straight line rather than like a cluster. Um, if you have a small classroom, I see like Stephanie says she uses a large like cookie sheet. Um, and it depends on too how big your name icons are. If you are using these, you can all, these are a freebie in my TPT store. You should totally get them even if you don't use them for question of the day. I have like, I think we have four sets of these and I do one side with uppercase, one side with lowercase, and then the, uh, oh, <laughs> the other side has lowercase. Um, but that way we, we use them all the time um, because we're always using their names um, for activities and building them. So um, Cindy said she uses them the side of a file cabinet. That's a, that's a super smart idea. That's something you don't even have to buy. It <laughs> won't fall over. Just use the side of a file cabinet. Um, again, Stephanie and Jennifer say they use large, um, those cookie sheets. 
Um, Stephanie also said she uses the name strips. Oh, and this is what I was going to tell you. I got sidetracked. So if you have these name strips, save it as a PDF. So you go, go to, um, you know, when you go to save as, there's a little drop down menu and click PDF. Then you can print these off smaller. So you can even have them like half this size. So they would be like, I don't want to bend his here. I have mine. <laughs> so you could like, they would be like this small. So yeah. Alrighty. Oh, so Nicole says she puts hers on her door. I used to put them on my fridge door. Melanie says she has hers on her easel. Elena says she has them on a pocket chart. So yeah, you can really put the question of the day anywhere. Um, but yeah, so it's 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 just again, I it's just a great way to get kids learning. And if you do it as part of your morning routine or part of your circle, it's just a way to start that conversation, get kids learning, like right when they walk in the door, because I think management classroom management is huge and if you when you get those kiddos that come in and there's nothing for them to do um or maybe there's just like a table time activity they don't have like a morning procedure to do um they kind of like wander a little bit right or they get a little bit sad because mom's leaving but if they if they know they have things they need to do and they need to get done then they are more focused and it's just what the way you start your day off is the kind of how usually the rest of your day is going to be right um or or we hope if it starts out bad we can turn it around but typically if you have a great start to your day you're going to have a great um middle of your day a great end of your day so yeah so start off that day and if you haven't done question of the day and you want to try it in your classroom don't feel like oh man like it's already you know, it's already September, I've been in school a month, or maybe you're watching this and it's December, or maybe it's, you know, February. You can always add things to your classroom and be and just tell your kids, you know what, you guys are so smart now. I, let's, we're going to start doing this every day because you guys are just so smart. And I just, you, you, we, you're, I, you guys just blow me away and you know we're gonna add this to our morning routine so now in your morning routine you're gonna come in you're gonna put yourself away you're gonna answer the question of the day and then whatever you do next put your water bottle away or whatever it is or fill up your water bottle um so yeah so just tell them you know what you guys are so smart I need to make I need to make school harder for you because you guys are just too too cute and too smart so we're gonna make it tricky and I want to see if you guys can figure this out and just model it a couple times and they will be good to go. So don't feel like just because you started the year with your morning routine or um, not doing question today, don't feel like you can't start something because I think, I feel like sometimes the beginning of the year is crazy and it's busy and sometimes, you know, we see something that's awesome that another teacher is doing and we're kind of like, oh, do I want to change my procedures? You know what? You can always change it and if it doesn't work, you know, go back to the way it was. But you know, if you try it and it's awesome and now your kiddos have another guaranteed learning experience every day, like my kiddos, you know, if your kiddos do question of the day, they are reading one pattern sentence a day. They're reading sight words every day. And again, even if they're not reading the words, they're still reading that picture cue. So there's one thing they're reading every day. They're um, doing math because they have to, they're putting it on a graph if you go over it then you're doing more and less every day. Um, if you're totaling it, then it's just another way to compare quantities. You're doing more and less um, with numbers rather than like the actual quantities. Um, so yeah, so it's just another way to sneak in more learning because the stuff they expect our kindergartners to do is insane, right? We know it's not developmentally appropriate, but it's, it's just what it is. So we gotta, we gotta sneak in all the learning we can every second of the day we can. So yeah, but yeah, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to pop them in the comments. If you want to check out other people's question of the day setups, what you can do is hop over to the pocket of preschool Facebook group in the little search bar, put question of the day, and all the photos will pop up of everyone's question of the days. Um, or you can ask if you have a question about how this could work in your classroom, because maybe you're... Um, maybe you're a special ed classroom, maybe you're a TK classroom, maybe you're a half day, um, or maybe you're a day school, or maybe you, you want to try it for your Sunday school classroom. Um, pop over there and ask all those questions because I guarantee you there's a teacher that is in the same type of classroom as yours and they can help you with it. 
So yeah, but again, if you have any questions, pop them here. You can also go to the top of this post. There's a whole blog post I did on it um, with all the questions. Oh, and somebody asked, is this mounted? It is not. It literally just leans and it doesn't fall. Like I'm just, I don't know if I'm lucky. I know these at the bottom um, have helped it kind of like weight it down. Um, so it doesn't fall now that I have these at the bottom. And these, it's just that magnetic bin I got from the Target Dollar Spot. And they're pointers. That way they can point as they read, are you wearing green? So they're developing that concept of word, reading that pattern sentence. So yeah. And again, those are optional. They don't have to do it, but they love it. I think they're more like hitting the board than anything else. But hey, I'll take a win where I can get it. All right. So you guys have an amazing evening. Thanks for tuning in. And if you want to watch an old, um, a past Facebook Live, go to the top of this post. There are, gosh, there's over like 100 Facebook Lives that I've done. So if you if there's a Facebook Live you want to know, if there's something you want to know more about, I've probably done a Facebook Live on it. So go to the top of this post and check it out. And I will talk to you soon. Toodles.